Canava Launch is the premier water slide at the fairly new Soaky Mountain Water Park in Tennessee. This pro slide water coaster features the usual series of sharp drops and uphill ascents, but it was also the first ride of its kind to feature a wall element, making for an exciting finale. All of these aspects make it one of the world's best water slides, and I'll explain why in this review. Soaky Mountain Water Park opened in 2020 in Sevierville, Tennessee, just down the road from Pigeon Forge. The area already had a popular water park in Dollywood Splash Country, so Soaky Mountain knew they needed to make a big splash quite literally, and they most certainly did. The park opened with a loaded fleet of slides from Pro Slide, but their signature attraction was undoubtedly Avalanche. This would be one of their water coasters, but this one would have two features differentiating itself from the genre. First, it was a terrain water slide. The course hugs the hillside, working its way down as the ride progresses. Second, it would feature a massive wall element at the end. This was a first for a water coaster, and it was a brilliant addition. So many water slides have just one big drop and a boomerang element. So making this the exclamation point at the end of a super long and thrilling slide on its own was a dream come true for water slide fans. Avalanche is located towards the front of the park and has a really nice presence. You can see the first few elements from the parking lot. Then the entire slide is located way up on the hill. To get to the main midway, you have to walk down the hill, so you can see Avalanche from almost anywhere within the park because it's perched on that hill. And the multicolored paint scheme really pops too. You have bright yellow and green troths combined with some blue mixed in too. This slide only uses double tubes. You grab one at the bottom and lug it up a twisty path to the start of the slide. You can either ride this solo or in pairs, provided you meet the weight limit. Each raft must have at least 150 pounds, but no more than 400 pounds, and no individual rider can weigh more than 280 pounds. Now I think the drops have a bit more oomph with more weight, but the ascents give a bit more airtime with less weight, so it is a trade-off. Either way, you'll have a great ride though. The park is very strict about enforcing the weight limits though. At the top, each rider is weighed individually and then together. This procedure combined with the smaller rafts can cause the line to move slower than other water coasters. Combined with this ride's immense popularity, I highly recommend starting with Avalanche before it builds up a weight. I visited on an unseasonably cool Memorial Day weekend with fairly light crowds. Most slides were a walk-on, but this one still pulled a half-hour wait midday. I've heard this line can approach an hour in busier days. This ride's popularity led to the park actually installing a second water coaster for the 2022 season in the Edge. This is a dueling water coaster. While this ride is good too and offers a different experience with a racing element, Avalanche is still a better and more popular slide. One important thing to know is that the water temperature in this slide is downright frigid, much more so than any other attraction at the park. This water is not the least bit heated. I guess it ties in with a snow-inspired name. This surely will feel good on a warm day, but if you visit on a cooler day with temps in the 60s like we did, it can deliver a nasty shock, especially because of what happens on the ascents. This is one of those water coasters using high-powered water jets to blast you uphill. It's a similar method to something like Thunder Rapids at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, Cheetah Chase at Holiday World, or Rocket Rapids at Quasi. If you've ridden a pro slide water coaster that does this, you know that atop each hill, the water jets send a massive deluge over your head. So you can see why this ride may be uncomfortable on a cold day. Once dispatched, you immediately hit two back-to-back -back turns. They're slightly downhill, giving you some solid speed before the first plunge. That first drop isn't too large, but it gives nice airtime. It's a decent pop if you ride solo, and an even stronger burst of airtime if you're in pairs and approach the weight maximum. You then blast uphill at a good clip. No airtime here, but you basically experience a flash flood at the top from the aforementioned water jets. You then charge through back-to-back -back saucer turns, building up even more speed. Then comes a bunny hill. Your tube is launched uphill, so you and your raft go airborne over the top for some sweet floater airtime. And while you're enjoying those negative Gs, you also get doused with even more water. You then zip up another hill. You get some light floater airtime at the apex, and then another flood hits you. This rapid pace combined with all that water is a really disorienting experience. 
You then head around another saucer turn, maintaining the speed. Then you hit the one and only lull in the ride. You have a dip downwards, followed by another ascent. Neither maneuver offers any airtime, which is an outlier on this attraction. But without fail, you will get soaked from the water jets at the top at least. But don't worry, Avalanche has an amazing finale in store. You have this covered turn, which shields what's coming. You then head down a massive plunge into that unique wall element. This drop is large and steep, leading to sustained floater airtime. It is some of the best negative Gs you can experience on any water slide. And I love how the ride saves its best drop at the end so you have something grand to look forward to. Then you have the big wall. You get some faint weightlessness when you stall out, and then you quickly rotate 180 degrees on the way down. I am so glad this was appended onto a water coaster because it's a neat way to end the attraction. You then coast into the runoff trough, ending the experience. So what would I rate Avalanche? I would give this water coaster a 9.5 out of 10. This is an exceptional slide. It does so much well. The pacing is phenomenal. The slide never slows down between the repeated use of saucer turns and the quick ascents, and the constant barrages of water add an out of control sensation. Then the forces are strong too. Multiple drops and ascents give nice floater airtime, and the boomerango wall at the end is the chef's kiss on top of the experience. The only cons are that minor lull in the middle, which isn't even all that bad for a water slide to be honest, and the borderline uncomfortable water temperature. I was able to power through the frigid temps for the world class ride experience, but it was a deal breaker for my wife. I saw the same for others too. So this part may vary by person if you do visit on a cooler day. But again, if you visit on a warm day, I doubt it would be an issue. This is easily the best water slide at Soaky Mountain. The question becomes just how good is this slide compared to other water coasters. The only one I can absolutely say is better is Krakatau at Volcano Bay. See my review for that one but that one has one powerful drop after another. No other water slide can match the quantity and quality of the airtime you can get on Krakatau. I would definitely take Avalanche over River Rush at Dollywood Splash Country though. While River Rush does have three drops with really good airtime, all the other ascents and turns cannot match the chaos that Avalanche offers. This slide alone is worth the price of admission into the park if you're a big water slide fan. So those are my thoughts on Avalanche at Soaky Mountain Water Park. I think this is one of the world's best water slides, but what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.